Hi and welcome to this video about the origins of international relations. Today, following your request, we'll be answering the question if international relations begin in 1648. To do so, we'll talk about the Peace of Westphalia, what it is and what it meant, and the Inca Empire and its diplomacy as an example of pre-existing international relations before the Treaty of Westphalia. So let's go! We've often been told that the starting point of international relations is the Peace of Westphalia. It was a turning point in modern history. It is considered to be the origin of some essential modern international principles. With the goal to end religious war and prevent future conflicts, it aims states to coexist peacefully with other sovereign states by not violating their borders and not interfering in their domestic issues. But is it really the beginning of international relations, or just a milestone that marked the end of an era and the start of another one? Did interaction between nations exist before it? Could we really consider it as an international relations? IR can be traditionally divided in four different types of interaction. In the first place we have war. It is the one that requires the highest interaction between individuals and political entities because of the logistics it involves and the amount of resources and people that need to be mobilized. Secondly, there is trade. The exchange of goods, needs of transportation that can be achieved through low interaction between political entities if the products are of little volume and highly demanded. Think of the Silk Roads. Or through high interaction, for example, by sea. Trade also has an important role in the flow of ideas, knowledge, and cultural exchange. From a political approach, diplomacy is a type of interaction, too. Conceived as negotiation through representatives of different political entities, it is used to avoid wars and as the main foreign policy tool. It included several strategies, among which trade agreements, intermarriage, and gift giving. There is a last type of interaction between groups of individuals that includes religion and culture. From a social point of view, individuals can help to shape international relations through their actions and influences abroad. Think of tourism, religious authority, or cultural influences. It has been proved that there were international entities that fulfilled these four conditions much before the Westphalia Treaty. These kinds of international relations have occurred between civilizations, city-states, and different polities. The Inca Empire that existed from 1438 to 1533, or Tajantisuyo in the Quechua language, was one of the biggest empires dated in history. It was located in the continent of South America and controlled such a vast territory. The first Incas were settled in Cusco, which set the beginning of the well-known empire that embraced the territories of the current countries of Peru, Bolivia, Chile, Ecuador, Argentina, and Colombia. We will focus on Inca's advanced diplomacy to prove that IR began much before the Peace of Westphalia, and we will explain why it was a landmark rather than the start of international relations per se. Let's start. The Inca Empire was characterized by its particular strategies for expansion. It may seem weird, but espionage was a common practice by the Inca community in order to fight against the enemy and then expand its territory. Firstly, the Incas used the figure of the spies, which were sent to the enemy's community. These spies could be messengers, explorers, or the aristocrats of the high class of the society to negotiate. This strategy was used to know how the enemy's society was organized. So, in further conquest, they would know how they had to coordinate the army and what tactics might work better. Speaking of the cultural relations between the Incas and the indigenous groups, most of them were for war reasons or conquering purposes. The Incas once used persuasion as a method to conquer a group of people. One of the examples is the Musus, which were persuaded to voluntarily accept Inca rule and their friendship. This conquest was successful since not only the Musus let the Incas live in their lands, but they also gave to the Incas their daughters to establish more proper unions between both parties. Diplomacy was another kind of a strategy in order to expand its territory, for example with the activity of intermarriage. This process started establishing a relation with the leader of the new community by offering him some gifts such as wool or materials from the gods. Once the contact was accomplished, they established family ties with the tradition of intermarriages between the different ethnic groups, and this activity was carried out by the Inca ruler, so he married his daughter with a prestigious person from another community, and as a consequence, 
he established solid alliances with another community and then the empire concentrated more power. Trade was another way of creating new linkages with foreign cultures, for instance with the tribes of the Amazonas. This trade involved the exchange of knowledge and traditions between different systems or civilizations. They weren't isolated units in the middle of the continent. Having discovered the, way the wheel yet wasn't a disadvantage for them. Thanks to the animals such as llamas or alpacas, the Inca Empire was able to travel on the roads united by bridges in the steep mountains. Despite the hard conditions of the logistics in such an irregular territory, the amount of trade was considerable. Another important factor to highlight in the sector of the Inca's trade is the existence of the messengers, or also known as chasquis. They carried the messages with a system called quipo in order to be exchanged between the different parts of the empire. The capacity of diplomacy through messengers and trade was very clear in the Inca's empire, which implies the existence of international relations. The Treaty of Westphalia managed to develop a framework for international relations that did not exist before the 17th century, which consisted of the introduction of secular precepts in what concerns the state, the use of diplomacy as a tool to prevent war overall, and the creation of the basis of international law. Also, the Westphalia Treaty helped to create and develop an international system for the society consolidating a normative divergence between European relations and the rest of the system. Nevertheless, international systems already existed before the Peace of Westphalia. So, the Westphalia Treaty is not the beginning of international relations as it is proved before, but a milestone of the end of an era and the start of another one, in which the state will be the main political entity and the center of the future international relations until now. This new age creates the nation-state and consolidates it as the principal actor under a new set of principles that will be the base of our current international system. Besides, we could argue that Westphalia Treaty is not that relevant from a non-European perspective, given the scale that even though it modified European borders and was a breakthrough in European politics, it did not have immediate implications in other parts of the world. The non-Western impact Non-European states, as it was supposed, had a lack of European culture and knowledge about the social agreement between Western societies. However, the international system evolved with the idea of crafting international stability and order, with newer and more defined concepts of the traditional sovereign state. The sovereignty of Westphalia is understood as the leader's rightful entitlement to exclusive, unqualified and supreme rule within a delimited territory. But non-European countries had these thoughts imposed later on in their societies as standards of civilization. That's why such an exploration uncovers that the domination of the territories actually produces a rejection of non-Western states and a negative understanding of that part of the society. While Western societies had an understanding of their political and religious ideas that originated from the treaty, Non-Western societies had a dearth of political and religious tolerance since they had a different culture and historical background. It is assumed that this continuous rejection of the European countries towards the rest is because they wanted to keep the intellectual and its political system as a reference for international relations. So, then, Western societies would maintain their power and their position of superiority towards the others. The final conclusion. To summarize, there are evidence of the existence of international relations at least 3,500 years before the Common Era, thus before the Treaty of Westphalia, as we have proved with the case of the Inca Empire. They were able to create the largest kingdom in the world at the moment, very developed warfare techniques, a trading system based on a network of roads that allowed to keep control of the whole country at the same time that promoted the flow of cultural and economic exchange. A complex administration and advanced diplomacy that allowed the Inca Empire to subjugate neighboring domains while avoiding an open military conflict. We believe that the Westphalia Treaty can be considered as a millstone and a clear example of Eurocentrism. Of course, the Treaty of Westphalia was an important day that set the nation-state as a political figure, but not the starting point of international relations. And, analyzing history, there are many instances of Eurocentrism being taken seriously as a reliable source of historical information. 
even though we can conclude it had an impact on the rest of the world because of the territorial expansion of European powers, later on it was somehow limited and we cannot see clear and direct consequences of Europe. Between the 15th and 16th centuries, the Inca Empire in South America showed a clear example of international relations, with its advanced diplomacy involving trade, war and politics.